Hello everyone, Zodin here with another episode, another episode about to talk about things. Today's going to be talking about China and Russia united against US sanctions? Are they friends or foes with North Korea? Because like US wants to enforce stricter sanctions on North Korea, specifically the target card, oh my god, targeting Chinese and Russian firms. Now, there's been lots and lots of sanctions on North Korea, and they don't seem to be working particularly because North Korea still continues to trade, especially with China, and like to change company names and all sorts of devious things, you know, one might call capitalists, you know, <laughs> bypassing loopholes and stuff. <laughs> You know, everyone's like, oh, they're all communists, but they very, they love money very much. They love money too much. Just like PewDiePie, right? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so... <clears throat> so definitely, China and Russia doesn't like the sanctions. They want US to back off, targeting their companies and stuff. Because they want to make money for most... And uh, and also, more sanction against North Korea is just not good for them, because if North Korea collapses or anything, any power struggles, that's instability. That's gonna be causing refugees flooding mostly into China, but also into Russia. They don't want that stuff happening. Just like the U.S., a lot of Americans don't want Mexicans and South Americans flooding into the U.S. from refugees and from war and drug cartels and all that stuff <clears throat> so China definitely China especially China and Russia doesn't want any refugees from North Korea or anything like that and if North Korea collapses that probably means South Korea swoops in tries to go for the United Korea and that means more Western influence in East Asia also another thing China and Russia don't want most of the border is between North Korea and China, but also Russia has a sl slight border. And yeah, North Korea, as long as it stands remaining, that's a massive buffer zone between Western influence, you know, South Korea, Japan, and then Russia and China. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is also why. <clears throat> Which is also why China and Russia are mostly aligned with their goals. They want to keep Western influence out, away from them, both on the Eastern Front and the Western Front. So on the Eastern Front, that's mostly North Korea and also for China and South China Sea. And then for the Western Front, there's the you know, Eastern Europea, Eastern Europe, mostly Ukraine. But I'm sure there's other countries along the border that Russia wants to keep close and aligned with them to, to act as a buffer zone. Get out West, get out U Western Europe, get out US influence. And also in the Middle East, the Russia is mostly aligned with Syria. And hey, I definitely did not do the full research. I'm almost positive it's Iran, right? Iran, Syria, and Russia all together maybe not all completely allies but you know you know the human rights violations gotta stick together right <laughs> yeah that's why China and Russia usually they pretty much veto any human rights issues when it, when it comes to any nations in the Middle East probably in Africa too so right now Russia and China are for the most part aligned they're both anti-West. They want to keep U.S. and Europe and, you know, their allies away from them. Keep their influence out. China's mostly vying for influence in Asia, East Asia, and Africa. And then Russia is mostly in the Middle East or West Asia and Eastern Europe. And they, both of them share a goal with Central Asia. China wants to recreate the Silk Road, wants to create massive trade infrastructure all from China all the way to the Middle East. So 
that's uh, that includes Central Asia that's right in the middle of it smack dab in the middle of it and also China and Russia both have like s some problems with Muslim separatists for China's mostly the I don't actually know how to pronounce it Xinjiang <laughs> X-I-N-J-I-A-N-G yeah mostly the I believe it's Uyghurs yeah but they're basically Muslim Chinese people or Muslim Turkish Chinese like they're kind of possibly mixed like basically Turkic Turk Turkish people that migrated that have been living in that area for a long last time at some point China conquered it yeah <clears throat> so they're mostly Muslim and there's also Chinese Muslims Hui H-U-I yeah I don't know how to spell the Uyghurs but yeah so there's there's a mix so it's some of them are Chinese like like close to like to me but Muslim and then some of them are more like uh, Turkish I don't want to say Arabic I, I think it's Turkish Turkish is separate from Arabic yeah so so China has those people ethnic minority ethnic Muslim minorities that they would prefer to keep part of China but you know some of them they want to be separate they want to have their own independent nation and same thing in Russia with uh, uh, Chechnya that's also used to be it broke apart from Soviet Union but then Russia conquered it back and there's a I don't want to say it's all mostly Muslim but it's probably a lot of Muslim people there and there's also problems with terrorists and stuff like that yeah I believe wasn't the the Boston Marathon bombers they I believe they're also from Chechnya Muslim Chechen Chechens or something I think so I think I remember reading they're from Chechnya yeah so both China and Russia have a little problem with Muslim ethnic minorities so yeah they have quite a few things in common and of course uh, they they want to they want to be the next military global world powers although some people say they're not really friends they're just like they're just like frenemies or something like everyone else is the enemy so they just have to be friends <laughs> temporary partners just the goals are aligned and yeah there there's a lot of rich history between china and russia and also lots of tensions so yeah it's I guess there aren't like best friends or anything but honestly which country is best friends almost every country you know all the relation allied countries they have they have tons of they have tons of connections and tons of tensions you know they have rich history etc sometimes they're friends sometimes they're enemies sometimes they're you know <laughs> sometimes they're neutral there's no such thing as like like peer peer like peer leaf super close positive relationship <clears throat> although like the, probably the best relationship China does have with is probably with Pakistan but also China's also trying to trade with India so maybe that you know sours the relationship a little and also China every now and then tells like Pakistan you gotta take care of the terrorists you know terrorists coming into China from Pakistan and stuff like that you know because they also China wants to you know create more trade infrastructure with Pakistan and Central Asia and of course you know they're, they're worried about the terrorism and the instabilities and yeah all the racial tensions and the religious tensions and all that stuff political parties all the separatists and all that stuff every, almost every country has their own separatists and religious strife and ethnic strife and stuff so it's not nothing new nothing yeah it's just how the countries deal with it so obviously the US is more de democratic so ch while China and Russia is more I don't want to say like fascist dictatorship but it's definitely leaning towards that direction I mean they have voting they have democracies ish and they have presidents and stuff like that so on paper I guess yeah they're democracies but they definitely have a lot of human rights issues and you know people disappearing people being imprisoned for the rest of their life people just straight up end up dead <laughs> yeah 
like on that issue like there's a is the Panchen Lama a couple of decades ago there was a new Panchen Lama and then China just took him away and then like oh he we're just capturing him for his safety you know <laughs> and then you never see him ever again so the Dalai Lama said you know what maybe I won't reincarnate ever again maybe this is the final life because you know he doesn't want the next Dalai Lama to be kidnapped by the Chinese government of course China is gonna say saying oh you don't get to choose we <laughs> We're gonna choose the next Dalai Lama. What do you, what do, you, what do you, you know, believe in reincarnating yourself or not? Yeah, <laughs> pretty crazy. Yeah. So, and of course, talking about politics, can't God can't avoid talking about Trump. So he's saying he's repeatedly, repeatedly saying throughout the, his campaign and till now, he wants to be tough on China. He, he wants to pull out of Asia, pull out of the Middle East, pull out of Europe. It's like, no NATO. We're like, we're not going to help you. You got to help yourself. No South Korea, Japan. You got to help yourself. No to Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Wow, that was bad. Got to help yourself. He's saying like, all the allies in, the, in Europe, in Middle East, in Asia, you just gotta help yourself like oh make America great again America first America is being isolationist again you know everyone fend for themselves you know like like oh you want to solve the problems just get nukes nukes for everyone <laughs> that that'll prevent any wars prevent any aggressions <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean that's true after World War three Glow, like global nuclear apocalypse everyone's dead yeah that's world peace that's world peace so he's right in that <laughs> in that way in that logic just that everyone will be dead <laughs> no one will be around to enjoy it except for like mute like radioactive mutant cannibals yeah <laughs> I'm gonna take a drink of water <coughs> What was I saying? Yeah, Donald Trump. So yeah, he's saying you gotta pull out everywhere, make America great again, make America the top priority, and make America first. Yeah, so that's that's actually great news for Russia, great news for China, because pretty pretty much that means they can do whatever they want without consequence. With the U.S. is basically the main global police, the main top global world power. I mean, they can't control the world, but they have a massive military threat, massive military power. They can project and spread influence all throughout the entire world. And if U.S. pulls back as according to Trump's desires, you know, as his campaign promises, he hasn't really done it so far. Like, he's putting even more troops in Afghanistan. He's, you know, like, after reviewing, like, files or whatever he's like oh actually NATO is actually kind of useful <laughs> I mean he's still asking like the Western Europe allies like oh you got to pay more for NATO and like but he's he's no longer going like oh we're pulling out of NATO I mean he's it's not a top priority and yeah he's he's still getting involved with North Korea so that's so I guess he's not completely pulling out of Asia and in the Middle East, um, he's also doing military strikes and stuff like that. He's like, who, who knew? You could, you know, you're, you have control over people's lives. Innocent people can die at the fire of a missile. Like, wow, really? Who knew? Everyone knew. <clears throat> That's why so many liberals, Democrats protest the war. They don't want innocent people to die. Hey. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> if U.S. pulls out, actually pulls out, that's going to be great for China and great for Russia because that means they can, you know, act without impunity. Their aggression will be uncontested. I mean, obviously, there's still other countries that can stand up to them. The U.K., Germany, most, probably most of the Europe, at least the Western part, like France, like some of the nations quite strong. I'm sure they can stand up against Russia. And uh, in Asia, there's definitely India. 
Yeah, and Middle East, they're still like Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, yeah. Uh, whole bunch of countries there that may be not as strong as the U.S. Oh, also Israel. Of course, Israel. Israel's pretty strong. They got lots of Western tech, lots of American tech. So, Middle East, Europe, Asia, there's still plenty of countries. You know, Japan, South Korea, plenty of countries that are willing to take a stand against China and Russia. But without the U.S. backing them, that causes a little bit of worry, a little bit of fear because the U.S. is like the group, like their strongest ally, their strongest trading ally, strongest military ally for like most of the countries in Europe, Middle East, and in Asia. So that is definitely a problem. It leaves a little a vacuum, power gap. So who knows? Maybe other countries can step up and become stronger, or maybe they'll just crumble like, towards. Uh, China and Russia because like the weaker countries they got to choose you know some of the countries are way too far away you know to protect them and stuff so they got to choose Russia they got to choose China and, and that means more economic power for China and Russia more military influence and yeah so <laughs> who knows maybe maybe not World War 3 but a new Cold War it's going to be West versus East. <sighs> yeah. West versus East and USA is <laughs> all isolated by itself. Okay. I think I've made my points clear, right? Or not very clear. Mostly rambling off topic stuff, but yeah. Russia and China. Oh my god, yeah. The most, the main important thing is they want to help maybe they don't want to help Korea but they don't want to you know they want they don't want to be against Korea either North Korea wow I'm saying Korea <laughs> North Korea yeah so they want North Korea to last forever as long as that possible if pot you know <clears throat> because they need North Korea as a buffer state they need all those surrounding allies to, to trade with and to counter to push back the Western influence, the more countries they get on their side, the better. Like Philippines is, Philippines keeps playing. It's a little iffy, but they used to be strong ally of U.S. But then they had a new president, which people compared, saying like, "This is how, this is a preview of Donald Trump," <laughs> and he ended up being, you know, ex straight up executing drug criminal, drug uh, addicts, drug dealer, any. Any, any any criminal, anyone arrested related to drugs, bam, executed, killed on the streets. And of course, some US politicians don't like that. That's just straight up human rights violations. So Philippines is like, F you, F y'all, F you, F you America. I'm breaking up, I'm divorcing America. <laughs> and he's like, 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 you know, China, Russia, they don't care who I kill. You know, they don't care about the drugs. We, we, I can trade with them. I could get more military weapons and support and gear from them. You know, trade with them. Like they even say, like, oh yeah, and U.S. because of Trump, he canceled that. What was it? They wanted a treat, a free trade pact between Asia and the U.S. And then Trump is like, f no, cancel that right away. It was supposed to be like the Asian version of NAFTA, pretty much, where. Right now we got, and Donald Trump, of course, is trying to cancel, close NAFTA. <laughs> yeah, basically no more tariff-free trade or anything, no more dumping and whatever they want. If other countries want to trade with America, you got to pay taxes, import taxes. I don't know if there's export taxes, but basically, yeah. Got to pay taxes, lots of tariffs and taxes. Yeah. So <laughs> when you Trump cancel that, Philippines is like, okay, you don't want to trade with us? I'll gladly join the new world order created by Russia and China. <laughs> yeah, so China created a global bank, global, global bank, yeah, and, and of course it includes Russia, China, and lots of Asian and European nations, which, is a, which was a surprise that Obama and America like no don't join the Chinese global bank you know you're giving way too much influence to China but they didn't listen I guess 
they know where the money is at and who knows maybe they saw Donald Trump running as president they were scared for their financial future and they were right because Trump wants to pull out of every trade deal military alliance and everything that means more global influence towards China and Russia and I believe they're actually the head of the world international cyber security which is hilarious because <laughs> the US is constantly <laughs> Uh, accusing China and Russia of hacking the crap out of them <laughs> and now they're now they're part of the international oh right was it cybersecurity no it was Interpol right basically yeah China and Russia international they're like internet they're, they're involved in all international affairs you know <laughs> security cybersecurity catching international criminals trade finance banks it's crazy they're, those are like the last two countries U.S. wants to see being involved in all the international affairs. Yeah. Anyway, in conclusion, yeah, in conclusion, you what if if the U.S. keeps on acting like this, Trump keeps on being isolationist, keeps on focusing on making America great again. It's gonna also make China and Russia great again, and they're gonna keep on soaring, becoming the new influences, new influencers, new global powers, new world powers. Yeah. So hopefully everyone's enjoying this series. If you like it, it's like this video. If you have any opinions, what I said, what I commented, any maybe I said something wrong, I, or maybe you disagree, you can feel, you can educate me. I'm not a. I don't claim to be a political expert or anything like that. And obviously I have a pro-liberal, pro-democratic, anti-Trump, anti-Republican slant. That's only natural because I'm, I'm a minority that most Trump supporters hate. So yeah, you know there's actually a lot of Asian supporters for Trump and Republicans because they f because, you know, being Asian is not exactly the same as being black or Mexican, obviously. every or be, so every religion, every every uh, race is obviously different. You know, Mexicans, some of them, they're also like Christians, they're Catholic. Well, I think they're more Catholic than Christian. So, so also, they don't really like it. Because <laughs> it seems like Republicans, Republicans prefer Christians over Catholic, Catholic, Catholic people. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, aren't they both Christians? Yeah. <sighs> So obviously, yeah, pretty much all minorities, all religions, some of them, you know, there's Jewish Republicans, Jewish Black Republicans, Mexican Republicans, Muslim Republicans, Arab Republicans, Chinese Republicans, Asian Republicans, yeah. not It's not like everyone, you know, has a blind racial identity, religious identity, loyalty, you know, that stuff like that. Although, of course, if you hear, listen to the, like, Republicans or an alt right or whatever, like, oh, we yeah, like Democrats only win because of all the minorities, all the Mexicans, all the all the black people, all the Asians, all the Muslims, and all that stuff. They keep that's all they keep on saying. So I don't. So that's really perplexes perplexes me. Why, if you're a minority, religious minority, ethnic minority, whatever minority, gender minority. <laughs> Sexual minor sexual orientation minority, you're gay, you're a woman, you're whatever, you're transgender, why why would you wanna vote for Donald Trump? Why would you wanna vote for Republicans when most of the rhetoric is anti you? You know? <laughs> yeah. That's that's a topic for another day or not at all, because that'll probably give me some hate comments, but yeah. I don't honestly and also, ants, like poor people, a lot of Republicans are poor people. Even though Republicans' the policies, the rhetoric is always anti poor, always pro rich. Like, financial minorities, like, everything minorities. If you're not part of the elite, why the F you want to vote for Republicans, you know? Why would you want to be a Trump, Trump supporter, Republican supporter? I guess, yeah. And I guess for the minorities, they're like, oh, I got money. So, like who cares about the other minorities who cares about civil rights I need to protect my money so that's why they would vote for the Republican and then the poor white people poor white Christian straight 
males or whatever they're pro republican because they're racist they hate minorities they hate gay people they hate transgenders they hate muslims they hate jewish people i guess just the blind racism is good enough for them <laughs> so it's, i guess yeah they're like oh they're racist that's why they vote for republican they got money they're rich they, that's why they vote for republican yeah I imagine those are the main two main two things that makes them vote for Republicans. Even though Republicans, most of their policies, most of their issues are completely anti them. Yeah. Anyway, enough rambling. Okay, so hopefully everyone's enjoying this series. If you know, if you're a minority, whatever, and you're old for Republican, tell me why. Yeah. Anyway, so. God damn, how many how much rambling do I got? Okay, yeah, so if you like or dislike this video, be sure to let me know. Support me on Patreon. We got the cash money lying around if, to see more videos like this, see more let's plays, see more vlogs, see more political intrigue that I know nothing about, right? <laughs> Listen to a dumbass like me just talk about rambling around random shit. Oh, I don't think I cursed at all except for that last one. Yeah, trying to keep that youtube advertiser friendly right i have quite a few videos being marked as not advertising friendly i don't know if it's because i'm cursing or the thumbnails have blood in it because a lot of games play like violent you know zombies and stuff like that people getting killed and stuff so the north korea one that was the most popular one and it got flagged as not advertiser friendly is it because like i'm talking about war and stuff because I'm cursing? I don't know. Is it the title? So I try, I'm try. i going to have to try to make the titles super friendly and stuff. Yeah. So anyway, that's way off topic again. So yeah. Support me on Patreon. Because freaking uh, YouTube is not paying me enough. And I love money too much. Like family friendly Felix. Yeah. Anyway. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time. PewDiePie is pretty much the only YouTuber I watch these days. Okay. Bye bye.